Hello everyone and welcome to this important episode of Ignition Time. Is the reconciliation process, the process that the Democrats are focusing on to pass a total of $6 trillion in infrastructure spending, including the upcoming American Jobs Plan and the American Families Plan, is that going to be the wrong way to pay for infrastructure? Here's a brand new article on your screen from Bloomberg Opinion, from the Bloomberg Editorial Board, and we'll provide you with a link to this article in the description section below, using a benighted budget procedure would undermine the Democrats' own goals. It's far better to seek a bipartisan deal. Let's show you this headline on your screen from Bloomberg that reveals that President Biden and the Republican Shelley Moore Capito, who happens to be from West Virginia, from where we have the conservative Democrat Joe Manchin, the talks between President Biden and Shelley Moore Capito actually broke down and they essentially broke down without a deal. They failed to agree on the scope of spending and how to pay for it. And the discussions concluded after a phone call between President Biden and Capito before President Biden went to Geneva to meet with Putin and do other things like engage with our allies. Now, the president is back. But the fact is, right now, Right now, we have a lack of consensus between the Republicans as well as the Democrats. In fact, let's show you the bipartisan infrastructure plan on your screen right now, which was actually supported by a group of 20 senators, 10 Democrats and 10 Republicans. And this plan includes $579 billion in new spending. And as we scroll down, You'll see the allocation of this plan, $579 billion in new spending. Unfortunately, reconciliation may be, may be the only way forward and it may not be the best way as far as Bloomberg's editorial board is concerned. What is happening right now, like I mentioned, is President Biden has dropped out of negotiations with one group of Republicans and And the president is actually speaking with a bipartisan group in the Senate, which is offering this deal that you see on your screen right now, the $579 billion deal. Let's take a look at page two of this proposed bipartisan infrastructure plan. And this proposes financing sources for new spending, infrastructure financing authority to leverage private investment. In other words, getting private companies to invest, public-private partnerships, municipal bonds. In other words, more bonds will be sold so that when people buy them, that leads to more money coming in to the U.S. government, raising taxes. And by the way, that's what reducing the IRS tax gap means, redirecting unused unemployment relief funds because well over $12 billion in unemployment funds, which are not going to be used by 25 Republican states that are prematurely ending the $300 a week can be repurposed for infrastructure. And as you can see on your screen, there are a total of 11, 11 ways to actually raise revenue and to be able to provide the money needed for the infrastructure plan. Now, many progressives would actually prefer to pass a party line bill through the Senate's reconciliation process. In other words, the Democrats want to do it on their own. Here's the headline of an article on your screen from Politico. Senate Democrats weigh a $6 trillion infrastructure bill without the Republican Party. Now, this bigger proposal does not necessarily mean that the party has given up on bipartisan talks. So it's very clear that the Democrats want to try and get something done. In fact, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez actually compared the current talks to, I quote, playing patty cake. In fact, let's take a look at her tweet where she writes, President Biden and Senate Democrats should take a step back and ask themselves if playing patty cake with Republican senators is really worth the dismantling of people's voting rights, setting the planet on fire, allowing massive corporations and the wealthy to not pay their fair share of taxes, etc. Wow. One thing's for sure, uh, Congressman Cortez does not hold anything back. In fact, Many activist groups have actually recently published a letter and will show you that letter on your screen right now, basically saying that Congress must move now to reconciliation to deliver an equitable, sustainable economic recovery. Now, folks, all of these, all of these individuals so far are in favor of reconciliation. However, there are problems. Let's get back to this letter for a second from the activist group. And the letter basically says there's no choice but to move on thanks to unreasonable demands from the Republicans. Now, according to Bloomberg, and by the way, I'm going to quote the Bloomberg article right now. In fact, far from being unreasonable, Republicans have offered numerous ideas that would improve the plan, such as repurposing unused COVID relief funds for public works projects while gradually giving ground on spending totals. The talks have been characterized more by the give and take of normal politics 
then bad faith obstructionism. After years of Republican intransigence under former President Barack Obama, followed by Democratic resistance under Donald Trump, that's commendable in its own right. More important, though, is that reconciliation is a bad way to pay for infrastructure and it would undermine the Democrats' own goals. According to new reporting from Bloomberg, the rules of the process, which, by the way, you can see on your screen right here, will show you the Congressional Research Service document that shows you the budget reconciliation process, also known as the Bird Rule. By the way, this is a this is a pretty this is a pretty large document. So if you're in the mood, uh, you know, be my guest and check out the entire document. We'll include the link in the description section below. But I'll give you the bottom line as we scroll down this document. The rules of the process only allow for measures that affect spending and revenue. That means they would almost certainly prohibit Congress from transferring cash to the nearly depleted Highway Trust Fund, which by the way is the way we pay for roads and transit. And this could require a complicated workaround that may not even be possible. They could also also prevent tying funds to individual projects and rule out reauthorizing crucial grant programs that help pay for maintenance backlogs. Now for the same reasons that could potentially doom the reconciliation package progressives may also have to give up on clean energy initiatives and labor policy initiatives. In fact, let's show you this headline on your screen from Politico. Biden climate advisor infrastructure plan could omit some climate proposals. In fact, the Biden climate advisor, and by the way, her name is Gina McCarthy. She's President Biden's national climate advisor. McCarthy said, I think a lot of people have problems. And she said the White House will fight like crazy, her words, fight like crazy to keep climate items in a major push to try and reach the emissions goal set by President Biden. Here's a page from the website of Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal from Washington, and she's leading 207 House Democrats in calling for the American Jobs Plan to mandate strong labor standards. So you can start to see that labor policy and clean energy are a big issue as far as the Democrats are concerned. Now, here's the thing. Reconciliation bills are normally restricted to a 10-year window. So according to reporting from Bloomberg, the editorial board of Bloomberg, any qualifying project would in all likelihood need to either be completed in the specified time frame or cancelled at the end of it. Now, this is not good for the long-term priorities of the Democrats, such as high-speed rail or any big undertaking, which is going to take longer than 10 years. And now here's another big problem. The Senate parliamentarian has reportedly stipulated, and by the way, you'll see this on your screen from Bloomberg, the Schumer's infrastructure path may actually get trickier after a new ruling. A new ruling by the Senate parliamentarian could complicate the Democrats' ability to use the reconciliation process. So what's the bottom line? The Senate parliamentarian has stipulated that Democrats must have a legitimate reason for using reconciliation more than once in the same fiscal year, meaning in 2021. Now, how will this be defined and will things have to be revised? Can President Biden and the Democrats get the support of the conservative Democrat from West Virginia, Joe Manchin? All of this remains to be seen. In fact, the Democrat, Peter DeFazio, who's a chairman of the House Transportation and the Infrastructure Committee, actually called the process, I quote, arbitrary, capricious, and stupid. Yup, he said that. He called it arbitrary, capricious and stupid. You'll see a headline on your screen from Market Watch. The Democrats' desire to fast-track infrastructure could run into a familiar for the Senate parliamentarian. So, what is the bottom line? The bottom line is that it sounds good, but it may not happen. And it's something that the Democrats want, but it may not happen. Here's a very interesting quote from, from the editorial board of Bloomberg. Given the choice between compromising with Republicans and adopting this benighted procedure, for minimal gain, the right course should be obvious. A bill that focuses on core green energy and public works projects and relies mainly on debt financing instead of new taxes, appropriate for a one-time surge of investment with interest rates at historic lows, would help restore America's infrastructure, break the partisan gridlock, support the jobs of tomorrow, and lay the groundwork for growth. That's a deal anyone should take. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Please click the like button. Please subscribe. Please enable notifications. I want you to know that you are greatly appreciated. My name is Dr. Nitin Shoda with Ignition Time. This right here is a little bit of information about me. You'll learn more about who I am, what my journey has been like and why you should listen to me. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Take care. Bye.